okay so here we have this msbc code to so, msbc mein kya kya hai to so, is pe hoga generally maine yellow mein karke pehle se rakh liya hua hai ki jo ki important hai hum logo ke liye aur uh, we have to be concerned about it ki hum logo ko usme kya kya padhna hai aur what all we have to study in that one so here is the chapters that uh, as per the new amendments which came also so there are 14 chapter uh, 14 sections sorry this is the sections so 14 sections and five appendices so there were uh, before 13 sections and four appendices here the appendix number 5 this is bull cargo ship shipping name in three languages this is came into new and section 14 that is prevention of pollution by the cargo residue from the ships so this came new so except this uh, these chapters 13s were before and 1 to 4 were before so this is the content now here also i will show you what was before so before was this Thirteen sections, four appendices. Okay, now convention as per IMSPC. Why we required is it is same here written in part A B of the chapter six and part B of chapter seven. That's why we required and details of the fire protection arrangements and other things. Are given in Solas Chapter Two, Part Two of the Solas Convention by Regulation Ten and Nineteen. So Regulation Nineteen is already the drills, nothing much. And uh, Solas Chapter Seven is there. I'm gonna say okay. Here are the few words which we need to know. What is the meaning of the word shall, should, may? When used in the code, mean that. relevant provisions are mandatory recommendatory and optional so we should know the meaning whenever it is used shall should and may so here is the meaning generally sometimes this has been asked this work was undertaken by the subcommittee and cargo several edition of the Code of Safe Practice for the Solid Bulk Cargo. The BC Code has been published since the first edition was in 1965. Then after, okay, the primary the primary hazard associated with the shipment of the solid bulk cargo are those related to the structural damage due to the improper cargo distribution, loss or reduce of the stability during the voyage, and the chemical reaction of the cargo. So because of these things, because of these things, AMS BC came. So. Because the cargoes were reacting themselves as well as liquefactions of the solid bulk cargoes was going on. That's why the MSBC came, and all the cargoes were not included as well as they are having problems with. Uh, yeah, they are having the problems that uh, some cargoes were not specified that they have to carry that one. So how they have to carry? So these type of problems came. so though it, nowadays it has been uh, much uh, the msbc is much bulky and all generally all the cargoes been covered up into it so this is why then cargo listed in this code okay cargo not listed in this code now what this is what if a solid cargo which is not listed in appendix 1 or to the code is proposed for the carriage in the bulk the shipper shall prior to the loading provide the uh, provide the competent authority of the port of the loading with with the characteristic and the properties of the cargo in accordance with the section 4 of the code based on the informa information received the competent authority will assess the acceptability of the cargo for the safe ship uh, shipment so generally this does not happen all the cargoes are listed only few of them can be here and there which are not listed ascertaining the group when there is ascertaining ascertaining hazard related to group a and group b the definitions will come down 
so there's nothing just to have a glance of these things format for the properties of the cargo so this is how it has been described in this the format that tentative bulk cargo shipping name then description characteristic angle of repose density storage factor size class and group like this then hazards welcome then storage and segregation hold cleaning weather precautions loading precautions ventilation carriage means this is just a format in which all the cargo all the cargo whether it is iron whether it is sulfur whether it is wood pallet whether it is anything else uh, phosphate or something so these all will be having the same format same format means all the cargos will have same things like description like shipping name they will have descriptions characteristics what is their angle of repose size bulk density means the density class stowage group what are the hazards related with it stowage and segregation how to do it hold cleaning then weather precautions loading precautions ventilation carriages all these will be there then discharge clean up emergency procedures this will be there now section number 11 to 13 as well as now it will come to 14 also are informative so the uh, sections uh, section 11 12 13 14 are informative and appendix 1 other uh, appendices other than appendix 1 uh individual schedule of the shipper descriptive characteristic so except appendix 1 all are informative then exemption and equivalence copies here are now the definitions are coming so which definitions definition of solid bulk cargo what is solid bulk cargo So, what is bulk cargo? Means that any cargo other than other uh, other than the liquid or the gas consists of a combination of the particles, granules, or other large pieces of the material generally uniform in composition, which is loaded directly into the cargo spaces of the ship without any intermediate form of uh, containment. So, is this means that except liquid and gases. all other particles and the granules are coming under the solid bulk then here is the msbc code what is the meaning what is the definition of msbc so it comes to be meaning the international solid bulk code uh, cargo code adopted by the msc or uh, msc 85 as may be amended by the organization provided such amendments are adopted body to force and take in effect in accordance with the provision of the article Eight of the present convention concerning the amendment. So this is Article Eight. This is not Solas chapter. This is Article Eight. Something different from the Solas. So don't uh, take this as in the Solas. So here, Regulation Three is required for the carriage of the solid bulk cargo. So other than grain, because for the grain, grain code is there. So that's what is written in AMSBC. The carriage of the solid bulk cargo other than grain shall. be in compliance with the relevant relevant provision of the msbc code so this is what now we have use of pesticide in ship so use of pesticide mein kya uh, what is there is appropriate precaution shall be taken in the use of the pesticides in the ship in particular for the purpose of the fumigation and here referred to recommendation of a safe use of pesticide in ship then recommendation on the safe use of pesticide in ship applicable to the fumigation of the cargo hold then recommendation of so these all are msc regulation regarding to the pesticide because ships pesticides here it is asterisk mark which is referred to be here so this asterisk mark over here to be referred over here this is what so these all msc regulations will be dealing with this one but pesticide will come under msbc this is what i want to say then storage and securing so cargo unit cargo transport unit the ctu this refers to be in amdg ctu and then here is the appropriate precaution shall be 
taken during the transportation of the cargo units and the cargo transport units on the roro ships so on the roro ships also they are they are on the uh, cargo transport units when it is freight container shall not be loaded to more than maximum gross weight indicated in the uh, plate that is a safe approval plate csc plate is there on the containers this is all just general general that what to do what not want to do reference guides loading and unloading of the solid bulk so here yeah so this one is a little bit incomplete so regulation number 9 what is regulation number 9 is saying saying the loading unloading and storage of solid bulk cargoes so for the purpose of this regulation the terminal representative means a person appointed by the terminal or other facility where the ship is loaded or unloaded who has responsibility for the operation conducted by the terminal or the facility with regard to the ship uh, particular ship to enable the master to prevent excessive stress master to prevent excessive stress in the ship structure the ship shall be provided with a booklet and shall be written in the language and all this so what all is there so what all is the stability data the booklet shall be having minimum stability data as per solas chapter 2 part 1 regulation 22 blasting and blasting rate and capacity is maximum allowable load per unit surface area at the tank top plating so where it is given here is the booklet there are many times the people are asking ki which booklet is there so to enable the master the ship shall be provided with a booklet which shall be written in the language ship officers language is english and shall be provided with a booklet written in the english language the booklet shall have a minimum including thus thus then maximum allowable load per hold this is also given over there then general loading and unloading instruction with regarding to the strength of the ship structure including limitation on the most of the adverse operating condition during the loading and unloading blasting voyages any special restrictions such as limitations with the strength so number 1 then number 2 number 2 okay so there should be a booklet which is having that is loading and unloading and stowage of the bulk cargoes and which is refer referring to code of practice for the safe loading and unloading bulk carriers that is blue code they are referring to the blue code which is having these informations and all this so here you can see loading unloading and storage of solid bulk cargoes so this is the will stars which is going to here blue code which is referring over here and then it is saying that for the purpose of terminal and all this and master and these book this book should have what stability data blasting deblasting and the capacity maximum allowable load per unit surface tank top maximum allowable load per hold so all these data should be there this should be ship specific so here before the solid bulk cargo is to be loaded so they should agree to a plan so here plan again is re referring to the blue code itself we shall ensure that the permission forces okay the master and the terminal will this this is all about loading and loading there is nothing was that just we need to know these informations are provided it's seven points these stability datas and all this seven points 
as well as we have the blue code uh, this is what is provided in the blue code for the loading and unloading this is what is more important then carriage of dangerous goods in solid bulk form so this is part b carriage of dangerous goods so okay regulation 8 unless express provided otherwise this part applies to the carriage of dangerous goods in solid form in bulk in all ships to which the present regulations applies and in cargo ships of less than 500 gross tonnage so it applies to the vessels which are less than 500 gross tonnage is also so this should not be confused that it is only applicable to a uh, carriage of uh, dangerous goods in uh, 500 and above GT. So here it is written carriage of dangerous good. Yes, I want to mark it. So just to take that carriage of dangerous goods in solid form in bulk. So this applies. So here the word is carriage of dangerous good in solid form in bulk. And the solid form what is solid form in bulk? We had it we we were there before. Where the chapter regulation number two there was a definition yeah solid bulk cargo solid bulk cargo means this cargo and carriage of dangerous good in solid form in bulk so this will cover up the dangerous goods that is i am dg code this will cover up so this is the difference the words are different that the carriage of dangerous goods in solid form in the bulk and then we have uh, solid bulk cargos this is the difference okay now to supplement the provision of this to supplement the provision of this part each contracting government shall issue or cause to issue instruction on the emergency response and medical first aid relevant to incident so in case anything uh, in case of emergencies and we need medicines so medicine and emergency response it is the contracting government which is signing these agreement are required to provide so the carriage of dangerous good requirement for the carriage of dangerous good in the solid form in bulk the carriage of dangerous good in solid form in the bulk shall be in compliance with the relevant provision I must DC code as defined in regulation number 61.1 then documents so we will go to chapter 6 also so it will cover up also there also because it will actually the requirement for the carriage of dangerous goods in the solid form in the bulk it is same as what is just written in the MDG in the MDG also in chapter number seven it is written that how we can carry the dangerous good in uh, bulk carriers so what all separations and what all are there are the same thing over here that is from there they have copied and pasted over here nothing different so MDG also I made it I made these MDG video also so from there also you can see that where it is this what I remember is chapter 7.5 Doc, uh, but I'm not sure about that one. Just to check, please check this one. Regulation 10 documentations. So, what all documentations 
because these are also been uh, that what are the documentation so e ship shall carry dangerous good in solid form in the bulk have a special list for the manifest setting forth that dangerous good on board and the location thereof uh, details and so what all should be there so special with location storage plan which identified by the class and set out the location of all the dangerous good may be used in the place special list or the manifest a copy of one of these documents shall be made available before departure to the person or the organization designed by the port state authority so whom to be getting and then storage and the segregation requirement so dangerous good incompatible goods shall be segregated from one another okay incident incident reporting is only in the imdg just to keep you one more time to that uh, reporting of the incident involving dangerous goods so reporting of the incident is always only given in imdg code that's why all the ships carry imdg code Okay, now here comes the definitions. So, like angle of repose, some bulk cargo. Okay, bulk density means what is bulk density? Because it is written in the format. That's why the weight of the solid, air, and water per unit volume. Bulk density is expressed in kilograms per cubic meter. in general the void spaces in the cargo may be filled with an air and water so whatsoever it is been filled with but it will be expressed in per unit volume per unit volume so this one per unit volume so per unit volume means it will be weight kg or air or water so the unit will be kg per meter cube uh, cargo which may liquefy okay cohesive material means the material other than non cohesive materials so okay uh, just for the time being we will uh, we will uh, just read this one because afterwards will come what is non cohesive materials it will come then concentrates competent authority everyone knows concentrates because these definitions are asked like concentrates means the material obtained from a natural ore by a process of enrichment or benefication by the physical or the chemical separation and removal of the unwanted constituents so this to be a tough one is to be learned as it is and then consignment flow flow moisture point means the percentage of the moisture content so these are some small which flow state what is the meaning of flow state sometimes this one is typical to answer means a state occurring when a mass or the granule material is saturated the word here is saturated with the liquid to an extent that under the influence of the prevailing external forces such as vibration in impaction of the ship's motion it loses its internal shearing strength and behaves as a liquid so flow state that's why i told that it is sometimes difficult to answer also now what is group a consists of the cargo which may liquefy liquefy means a It's one word group b possesses a chemical hazard group c of a cargo which are neither liable to liquefy nor possesses a so not liquefy nor possesses chemical hazard that's why one two words and here also these i mean this and this and then here also we can have this one high density solid bulk cargo so high density solid bulk cargo means a solid bulk cargo with a stowage factor of 0.56x 
or less so it includes 0 0.56 0 0.56 meter cube per ton or less so this one is also important. this one was also important so here also material hazard only in bulk means the materials which may possesses chemical hazard when carried carried in bulk other than the material classified as a dangerous good in IMDG. So what is MHB? It is other than dangerous good. They are other than other than material classified as dangerous good in IMDG. So they are other than these materials. Okay now this one non cohesive material means that's why I stopped for the cohesive. So non-cohesive material means dry material that readily shifts due to sliding during the transportation as listed in appendix 3 para 1. Property of dry bulk cargoes. So what is appendix 3 para 1? You go to appendix 3 para 1. So this is appendix 3. So property of the dry bulk cargoes, non-cohesive cargo. So this is that there was the non-cohesive. Here is also non-cohesive. What are the following cargoes are non-cohesive when dry? This means that they can shift. So what are these are ammonium nitrate, ammonium nitrate, and all this. All this are listed over here. Then appendix 4 also just to show you what is that bulk cargo shipping name is there, group is there and reference so like there is some material like aluminium uh, aluminium this pipe product uh, UN number is 3170 see aluminium uh, smel smelting by products this is uh, this is uh, means for this we have to see this actually what I want to show you is about the phosphate which is generally been asked uh, they are asking yeah potassium chloride potassium chloride and it is muriate of the potash that is MOP MOP this has been given over there so it is MOP C potassium chloride so this is having C hazard this is group it is divided into group C that it is not having liquefaction nor it is possessing any chemical properties it is grouped in group C but it has been there so uh, this is also known as MOP just for the not to be mistaken up this is also known as MOP okay, now back to be non-cohesive so we now know which materials are non-cohesive then okay RTS the representative test sample means a sample of the sufficient quantity for the purpose of the testing and the physical and the chemical property of the confinement so RTS here it is then we have solid bulk cargo meaning which was before also 
except liquid and gases consist of combination of this then stowage factor means which expressed in number of the cubic meters which one tons of the cargo will occupy so it is one ton of the cargo the space which will be occupied in cubic meters so this is it stowage factor everyone knows what the stowage factor transportable moisture limit ventilation okay so how many types of ventilations this is continuous ventilation means ventilation that is operating at all the times mechanical ventilation means the power generated ventilation the natural vent means the vent that is not power generated surface and means the vent of the space above the cargo so these all okay to aid the stability this one is important having regard to the regulation solas chapter 2 part 1 regulation 22.1 of the solas convention a stability information booklet shall be provided on board all ships subjected to the convention the master shall be able to calculate the stability for the, the anticipating worst condition during the voyage as well as that on the departure and the demonstration that the stability is adequate so here we have this solas chapter 2 so just case we So Solas, Solas Chapter Two. Solas Chapter Two, Part One, Revolution Twenty Two. So, chapter two is uh, regarding regulation twenty-two, preventing prevention and the control of the water ingress. All the water doors shall be kept closed during the navigation, except that they may be opened during the navigation. All these about the water tight doors. So, this is all what is mentioned over here. Twenty-two dash decimal one. That is twenty-two decimal one. This is. So you can that all the doors shall be kept closed during the navigation, except that they may be opened during the navigation as specified in paragraph three and four. So three and four is over here. Then water tight doors of a width of more than one point two meter in the mechanical space, as permitted by the regulation thirteen point one zero, may only be opened in the circumstances detailed in the that regulation. Any door which is opened in accordance with the paragraph shall be ready to be immediately closed this means all the doors shall be kept closed during the navigate nothing much when is necessary to carry high density cargo in twin deck or the higher cargo spaces due consideration shall be paid to ensure that the deck area is not overstressed and that the ship stability is not reduced below the minimum accepted level specified in the ship stability data then yes bulges so this is about loading and unloading so bulges in the bulk carrier plays an important role so due consideration shall be paid to the bulge wells due consideration shall be paid to the bilge wells and stainer plates for which the special preparation is needed to facilitate drain means training is more important 
then bilge line sounding pipes and other uh, service lines within the cargo spaces shall be in a good order okay now safety of the personnel and the ship this chapter comes to be section 3 of this so a copy of the instruction of the emergency response and medical is to be provided poison corrosive and asphyxia hazards so these all nothing that it is medicines health as are due to dust to minimize the chlorine and the acute uh, acute risk so this is nothing this is not nothing but this is as a hard due to the dust that is to be kept in mind by the all the persons but uh, as per the point of view of the questions not me now so but we should we should have this chapter this is very important for our personal safety the chapter 3 safety of the person and the ships so it is very important for us actually so these all we should know okay fumigation shall be performed based on the recommendation developed by the organization so for that we have to refer to this circular that is 1264 okay now identification and classes if the waste cargo are being transported for the disposal or the process of disposal the name of the cargo shall be preceded by the word waste means first write waste and then the name of that uh, cargo provision of information okay now this is important that what the shipper should give us so the shipper should give us cargo information shall be can confirmed in the written and by the appropriate shipping document prior to the loading the cargo information shall be included there are only few things which we know that the shipper is providing us but there are many things which he has to provide actually he has many things to be provided so that is secondary names may be used in addition to the bcs so it is here written bal cargo shipping name is bcsn and un is united nation so bcn when the cargo is loaded bcn is when the cargo is listed in this code secondary names may be also used cargo group a b c then i am a class of the cargo the un number the total quantity stowage factor need trimming or not it does not need then trimming procedures as necessary the likelihood of the shifting including the angle of repose additional information likelihood of formation of the wet base toxic toxic flammable gases flammability toxicity corrosiveness self heating property or the emission of the flammable gases radioactive properties if applicable and other information required by the national authority so these all are to be provided by the shipper and this is given in chapter 4 so this is the format how it should be form of the cargo information so how It should be provided. So this is the form that has been given. Certificate of test. So when the concentrate or the other cargoes which may liquefy is carried, the shipper shall provide the uh, the ship's master or his representative with a signed certificate of the TML and the signed certificate of declaration of the moisture content. This is to be provided by the shipper. Okay. Okay, now interval between the sampling, testing, and the loading for the TML and moisture content determination. So, a test to determine TML of the solid bulk cargo shall be conducted within six months. Here is the period of the validity of the TML. That uh, how what is the duration? So, it is six months 
to the date of the loading uh, the cargo notwithstanding this provision where the composition or the characteristic of the cargo are variable by any reason the test to be determined even shall be conducted again after it is reasonably assumed that the such variations has taken place okay now sampling and the testing for the moisture content shall be conducted as near uh, as practicable to the time of loading so it is not likely that it is six months you have done so it is okay no you have to do it before loading as close as possible if there has been significant rain or the snow between the time of the testing and the loading check test shall be conducted to ensure that the moisture content of the cargo is still less than the TNM means on the spot testing and all this should be done and if not you can tell if you are not satisfied with your test that it okay it is not you can send it to the laboratory and after the laboratory confirms that it is okay or not okay you decide whether to load or whether not to load the interval between the sampling testing and the loading shall never be more than 7 days the interval between sampling testing and loading shall never be more than 7 days here it is going okay it is valid for 6 months but here you come also 7 days sampling of the frozen cargo shall be tested for the tml or the moisture content after the free moisture has completely so so okay so it is here a uh, how a plan of a stockpile is drawn and divided into the areas each of which contains approximately 125 or 250 and depend on the amount of the concentrate bit to be shipped such a plan will indicate the number of sub sample required and where each is to be taken each sub sample taken is drawn from approximately 50 cm below the surface of the designated area means for everyone you take out at 15 cm below you take out something like here it is been the number of the sub samples are and the sample size are given by the competent authority or to determine according to the following scheme consignment is of 15000 tons so 1200 grams sub sample is taken from 125 tons consignment same but not more than 60000 tons 200 gram sample is taken from each here is from each here is also from each to be shipped that's are more than 60000 So 200 grams of sample is taken from each 500 tons to be shipped. Then sub samples for the moisture content determined are placed in the sealed container immediately on withdrawing for the convenience to the testing laboratory and throw the mixture in order means they will be sent to the laboratory. So means they have also given the provision. how sub sampling and determination is to be done also then example few of them document required on board the ship carrying dangerous good so okay this is dangerous good manifest okay this solas chapter 7 regulation Ten decimal two. So each ship carrying dangerous good in the solid form in the bulk. Each ship carrying dangerous good in solid form in the bulk shall have a special list or the manifest setting forth the dangerous goods on board and location thereof in accordance with the Solas uh, Solas Chapter Seven Regulation Ten Decimal Two. So this is required for ships carrying dangerous good in bulk. in solid form in bulk then trimming procedure so alternate hold restriction is so last chapter 12 can show you over here explain